kidding me? This this Xerox copy of Chicken Scratch of a transcription of a Cle Cleveland Orchestra Sigurd Rasha recording has Don Sinta's musk all over it. Welcome back, guys. We're doing three in a row. You saw my mouthpiece review, or my mouthpiece refacing review. You saw my Altissimo video on E and F, the redo, the part du. And this is part, this isn't part trois, this is part un of F sharp and G. So let's get into it. F sharp fingerings. I'm not gonna play, I'm gonna spare you guys because I have not practiced a lot. And I don't think you guys need to hear this, but let's, let's get into first, how to construct super high partials. So we kind of went over the different rules for overblown palm keys and how to construct high notes just using your palm keys. So let's go over that again. Right, there's my E. There's an F. So now this is relevant to the series and this brings us to our first fingering. If you overblow a palm E, you get a high F sharp. Pretty cool. Uh, another fingering I like for that is just to put down one. This was like always my go-to. I love this fingering. Take a little off it, Sean. I'm like blasting it so I don't miss it and that's not helpful because my sound gets a little crazy. If you learn nothing else from this video, you know that you can overblow E, F, and F sharp palm keys to get high F sharp, G, and G sharp, right? There, go ahead and turn off the video. Don't, because I have more fingerings. So let's get into those F sharps that you might enjoy. So a slight modification to my fingering. Again, per our discussion in the previous video, part de of E and F, if you're using these overblown palm keys, remember that the designers of your instrument probably didn't have this interval in mind, this overblown super altissimo in mind when they were creating the tone holes in this instrument. So if it's not quite getting it for you, so if I, I'm talking specifically, if you're fingering palm E and then you're overblowing and you're not quite getting an F sharp, go ahead and swap out that C3 for a C4. And then that puts you a little bit higher probably puts you in a little bit more relaxed position. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a little squirrely, but it works. So the finger and I device for that would just be C1, C2, C4, one, and then TA. Yeah, so that, again, that kind of centers things, makes it a little bit easier. Try that one out. I don't like this next fingering I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway for the sake of being complete. Uh, X and TC gives you a nice little F sharp. I think a long time ago, this is how I used to play F sharp was just X, but we, we've, gotten, we've gotten a little more mature here on the channel. So here's just X. Not bad, not bad at all actually. And then if I add TC, I'm sure that raises it. In my estimation, X is a little flat and then TC is probably just a little bit too sharp. So again, I don't have a ton of options with this F sharp fingering, it's not my favorite. Before we get into our first G fingering, I wanna go, I wanna have a little bit of story time with you guys. Can we have some story time? Is that allowed on the channel? I think so, it's my channel after all. Uh, here we go. So when I was a young lad in high school, I desperately wanted to learn how to play super high and play altissimo and so, my teacher, David Henderson, shout outs, the goat, love that guy, uh, gave me a very chicken scratch copy of the Brandt Concerto. What do I mean by chicken scratch? I mean, this thing was transcribed from the recording of Sigurd Rascher with, I believe, the Cleveland Orchestra. I listened to that recording, like, I don't know, until the cassette tape strips came off, which they didn't, but just to kind of paint a picture of when that was. In the third movement, there's like a high G and I noticed that the high G and actually all the chicken scratch was in a different handwriting than my teacher, David's. So I asked him, I said, okay, why, why is the third movement different? And he says, well, that's because that's Don Sinta. Don Sinta did the third movement and I did the first two. And I was just, 
you kidding me? This this Xerox copy of Chicken Scratch of a transcription of a Cle Cleveland Orchestra Sigurd Rasha recording has Don Sinta's musk all over it. I am I am like receive this is the this is the urtext. I'm getting it straight from the source. You know, for young high school Sean, like having having uh, Don Sinta's stamp of approval for this G fingering meant a lot. And unfortunately, I never got a chance to study with him. Maybe maybe we'll rectify that in the near future. Because, uh, man, what a legend, right? Okay, so high G fingering is X. Oh, we'll call this the Don Sinta. The Don Sinta via the chicken scratch copy of the Brand Concerto. Oh, and before I even show you that fingering, shout outs to Noah Getz and Liz Ames for re-releasing that edition, the like Cleveland Orchestra, the good one, not the weird wind ensemble nonsense one when, I mean, Brandt was a little off the, little off the wheels there with that version. They re-released the nice version for piano and saxophone. So do check that out, do purchase that and support Noah and Liz because it's an awesome piece that I think should get a lot more play. Anyway, X to five is our high G fingering and credit goes to Don Sinta for teaching me this through many, many distant degrees of association. Like a bell, crystal clear, wonderful. And you could tell why I used to like this, this G fingering, or I still do, is that you could link it from X, my old school, uh, F sharp and then go right into the G. Pretty cool, right? For a lot of people that will just get you a G. It's one of these fingerings that like focuses in on the partial and you will get a G. But if you don't quite have the read for it or the mouth or whatever, the mouth, the embouchure pressure, the face to support this note, then you can do X2 and TC or X2 and then you can add TC to make it even sharper. Remember, per our conversation of overblown palm keys, we can do C1 through 4. I have a really bonkers one here. So you can do the same fingering and pretty much put down any keys from, from the pearls, and it will hopefully clarify it, make it a little bit more beefy. All right, and then there's like the whole family of kind of that overblown E fingering that I showed you guys, 2, 4, 5. Dude, this Ramon mouthpiece is sick. I don't have to do anything and the Altissimo comes out. Dang. <laughs> Go give this man some business. All right, and for all of you old school E-Bear, first edition, Urtext, Sigurd Rosher people, uh, I'm gonna give you your high A flat, that high A flat slash G sharp you've all been waiting for. So without further ado, we'll do like the worst of the bunch. This is the one three, four, six. Everybody knows this fingering. Everybody pretends like this is an A flat fingering, but it doesn't work for many people. Yeah, I mean, you just have to squeeze the living poop out of your, <laughs> out of your mouthpiece and read and pray that an A flat comes out. So like not a very elegant solution. Again, I do not like that fingering one bit, but I feel like I have to report it. So again, for our discussion, you can just finger high F sharp and get an A flat. And then the last on my list would be kind of this like X and two, and then like a whole family of fingerings related to that. So X and two gives you like an A flat-ish. And then if you add three, it's gonna lower it, but it also makes it a little more resonant. And then if you introduce these other fingerings or other fingers, it'll raise the pitch. So to our X two three fingering, we're gonna add C three and C five. So there you go. I am thoroughly exhausted and that was just reporting the fingerings. I didn't even do them in context or anything. I think that ought to give you enough fodder to fuel your high F sharp G and A flat adventures. I'm all fingered out. I'm gonna come back real soon and do a triple quadruple altissimo series video. And you're just gonna have to stay tuned for that. So we'll catch you in the next one and Shoutouts to Ramon, this mouthpiece is the bee's knees. <laughs>